on the inside of you. And oftentimes we walk around and I and I talk about purpose and I, in order to get to that place of faith and fear and all of that, one thing we have to understand is the power of purpose. And when you understand purpose and you know that God has invested a purpose in you that is similar to your thumbprint. How many of you know that you have your own individual thumbprint that no one can replicate? They can try to copy it, but ultimately that one thumbprint belongs to you. Well, that's what purpose is. God has assigned a gift, a call, a dream, a conversation, a story. He's designed it and he's placed it on the inside of you. And what happens is that as we walk throughout this life, we allow the cares of this world and the different things that we experience to separate us. Simply put, God dropped us in our mother's womb. When we were released in this earth, we made a cry. Everybody cried when they came out? If you didn't cry, what did the doctors do? They spanked you until you got that cry because that level of oxygen had to connect with this, this earth. So you cried, and, and, and it sounded like a cry to everybody around, but simply put, that cry was saying, I am here. So when you came out, you made an announcement to the world, to the universe, that I am here. And as we walk throughout this earth, the cares of the world, the broken relationships, the disappointments, the things that, that hold us back and hold us down, it begins to separate us from what that purpose is. So then when people, you meet people and they say, well, I don't know what my purpose is. Well, that's because they've been disconnected from the purpose. The purpose is in you. You always know that it's there because it's the thing that you do best. It's the thing that when you, with your eyes closed, you can do it. And, and the thing that you love it so much that you would do it for free. Those passion, those things where you are highly effective. I tell my children this all the time. As I get older, I'll be 53 in a couple of weeks and I'm happy about that. Woo-hoo. As I get older, when I get to the point that you feel like I may be losing life, just grab a microphone and put it in my hand. If I don't function when you put that microphone in my hand, you know I'm on my way out. But this is my life, so I know what my purpose is because when I get a microphone or I get the opportunity to speak in me, I become a different person. I don't care about, I do care about this and all that kind of stuff, but I don't pay attention to the things that, 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 that were in my life before I got here. I don't think about what I should have done and this and that because now I'm standing in my purpose. I'm clear about who I am. I know what God has called me to do. So this is, is, is Marcella D mold. This is Marcella Denise mold. This is the mold that I get in because I know I'm standing in the will in the center of God. So when you, we talk about finding wealth and experiencing wealth, when you walk in purpose, that's your place of wealth. So you owe it to yourself to reconnect to your purpose. You owe it to yourself to take the time to really understand, to make a statement and understand who am I? And why am I here? Who do I belong to? What is my purpose in this earth? And oftentimes we'll say, well, well, my sister, this is my sister here. Everybody know it. This is my live or my dot, no, my ride and live chick, okay? Because they say ride or die. This is my ride and live chick. And, and we do, we are very similar in terms of what we do. We both call our titles, ministers, mothers, um, speakers. We have similar titles, but there, we, you can put us up together and we can say the same thing. But the, there are people in this room that she will only be able to touch and there are people in this room that I will only be able to touch because there's a different tone and we may talk the same and look the same, but there's a tone that is assigned and you recognize that tone. You recognize the voice of the person who has that key to ignite something that's on the inside of you. I'm not going to say something to ignite the purpose and the call that's on the inside of you. So those of you who feel as though, well, you know, I, I really don't know. I think this might be my purpose, but it's, it's a thousand people doing the same thing and saying the same thing that I'm saying. It's over, what, seven billion people in this world? So if you have the same thing, that means that God has more people who are assigned to that purpose that is in you. So do not allow that just because someone do, is doing the same thing that you're doing, don't, don't allow that to stop you. So Toya pa uh, passed out a piece of paper and it, and it says that my faith is in my movement. And that's the brief the thing that I want to talk to you about briefly. And in Erica's description that I had to give her about my time here, it says that my message for the day will be my faith is in my movement. The choices and decisions we make to determine the strength of the outcome is to determine the strength of our outcome. 
faith is the engine, the decisions, the choices that keep our visions and dream alive. The moment we change mindset and position, it empowers and it magnifies our faith, causing it to minimize the fear that may be present in our lives. And if you look at that, that sheet that I gave you, you'll see the little two pictures there. And one picture is someone jumping from, from one cliff to another cliff or going to from one place to another place. And then you see the other picture with the person there with a blindfold in them making a step. Understand that it is vital. Now, your faith is in your movement, and, and you might say, well, no, I don't have faith. I don't have a lot of faith. Let's read this definition. It says, faith is divine, is defined as belief with strong conviction, firm belief in something for which there may be no tangible proof, complete trust, confidence, reliance, or devotion. Faith is the opposite of doubt. Now, because I am not in the church service this morning and I am in the workshop, I didn't give you my definition of faith that I would have given if I was in a church service somewhere because when I do that, then it takes us to a different place. But because we're in the workshop and we're here and we want to live, we want to learn and we want to grow, that's the definition that I, 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 I put there because I thought that it was a good example, especially for those of you who may not be quote unquote believers or people of faith, because I understand that that may not always be the case. But for me as a believer, there's a scripture, it says in Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth and the sixth verse, and it talks about in the Amplified, it says, trust in, rely on, be confident in. And when it says those words, those are the words that I use in my day to walk in terms of developing the faith that I have in God. And then there's Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So those are some scriptures. And then it talks about without faith, it is impossible to please God. So the Bible itself does an excellent job of teaching us the power of faith. It does an excellent job of directing us and showing us how important faith is in our lives. So when we understand the importance of faith, and if you're not, if you don't have biblical knowledge or you don't study the scriptures or anything like that, let me say it to you like this so that you can understand clearly. Faith is necessary. And for those of you who don't read the Bible and you don't know the scriptures, let me tell you how important faith is. Stand up. This is as simple as this. Just stand up. I forgot to tell y'all it's going to be interactive, so you can't stand and go to sleep. <laughs> now, how many of you would raise your hand if I said to you, how many of you in the room, who has faith in here? Who believes they have faith? Okay. And you are 100% correct. You may not practice it the way that you feel that you want to practice it. You may not walk in it as often as you would like to. But let me show you how often you practice faith in your life. Have a seat. Now, anybody here, tell me this. Before you sat down, did you turn around to that chair and ask that chair if it was going to hold you when you sat down? Mm -hmm. yeah. When you came in the room and you had a seat, before you sat down, did you say, chair, check this out. I'm getting ready to sit in you. I need you to explain to me, and you need to prove to me that when I sit in you, that you are not going to collapse. You're going to stay like you are. And I need you to prove to me that while I'm sitting here, that you're not going to collapse. I need you to prove to me that just because you were able to hold this person over there at that weight that you're able to hold me over here and that way. Did anybody have that conversation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you came here and you got in the car, and some of you may have to, depending upon the type of car that you have. My car 10 years old, and oftentimes I have to have conversations. <laughs> right. So but when you got in the car, did you put your hand on the steering wheel and you said, look, I'm getting ready to go over here to this hotel. We're going to this worship. I need you to prove to me that you're going to get me there. So I need you to prove to me that you're not going to break down on me. I need you. Did anybody do that? So see how often you practice faith? See how simple faith is in terms of our living on a day-to-day -day basis? Many of us were mothers here. We had children when the babies came out. Did you hold the baby up and say, okay, well, where's the manual? You need to give me the manual. You trusted that the process of motherhood would be developed in your life and that you would be able to raise that child to the best of your ability. You practice faith every day. But we make it so difficult because what happens while we practice faith every day and we live a faithful life every day, the moment fear appears, 
we magnify it and we give so much life to it that it simply pushes us out of that place where we know where we can go and we can be. You get in the car, you're driving down the road. You know you're going somewhere that's going to be a blessing. You know you're going somewhere that's powerful. But then fear creeps in. <clears throat> well, maybe if I don't make it there, wait a minute. So you, make, you have to make a decision. Are you going to turn around and go back home? Or are you going to take that push and make that effort so that you can get to the destination where you need to be so that you can experience everything that God has called you to do and called you to be? See, the good thing that you all have who are sitting in this room today, I didn't have this, Donna didn't have this. We didn't have anybody to teach us any of this. We had to walk and bump our heads, roll over, figure it out, cry all night long. We didn't have this guidance. We didn't have this direction. We didn't have the workshops like they have today. We didn't have Periscope teaching us. We didn't have Facebook Live so that we can sit and get a class on how to do this and how to. We had to go through the things and mess up so many times. But because we understood the power of not staying there and making the decision that we were not going to allow fear mm -hmm. to have its way in our lives that mm -hmm. we got up and we're reaping the benefits today are we really what we really want to be no but we're not going to stop because we understand that there's so much work to be done so I have to encourage you all today. Is somebody timing me and letting me know how much time I got? <laughs> well, you gotta let me know, baby. We're gonna show you. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> Cause I can go on, okay? I can, I can go on. So we, we want you to see, we want you to understand and know what's on the inside of you and see the, the thing that, that just gets me excited about the God piece in all of this because I realize that the more I stay in his presence, the more I magnify him, the more I speak and I walk in the face of God. When I do that, it magnifies him. So when it magnifies him, it minimizes the fear that is present. And let me tell you all a secret this morning. Fear ain't going nowhere. It's not. Because they're, they're, the scripture tells us to fear God, right? We fear God. We, we teach our children not to go to the pool and jump in the water so that they don't drown and die themselves. There's a level of fear, right? That, that's not, that's a healthy thing in a sense because we want them to what? We teach them not to walk in the street when cars are coming. So what happens? We create that level of fear in them. So fear will always be present. So with, with that being said, then what do we do? We learn to manage it in a way that is productive. We learn to manage it in a way that we, not, we do not allow it to paralyze us and to stop us from being everything God has called us to be. So how do you do that? Number one, you do, just, I, when I was praying, and I say this often, and it's when God gave you, when he gives you the dream, when he gives you the vision, when he gives you the call, anything God gives you, an idea, guess what? You are already qualified. His giving it to you qualifies you. Now, you may not be able to get up at that moment and work it out or do whatever it is, but then at that moment, that's your job to do whatever it takes to educate yourself, to learn the things that you need to learn, to connect with the people you need to connect with, to get the coaches to do different things that, that will help you get to that place where you can apply the thing that he has said and he has given unto you. That's what you have to do. So when you do that, you, you build a confidence within yourself. And when you're confident about knowing, it's like when you're, when you're driving somewhere. Sometimes I can just get in the car and before I know it, I'm home. Anybody feel like that? You didn't pay attention to the signs. You didn't pay attention to the street lane. But because you know your direction, because you know where you're going, because you know those words, you're confident. So you don't even think twice about it. And that's what your job is. When you build your confidence and you do the things that you need to do to ensure that you maximize that, that dream or that talent or any of that, when you do that, that will allow you to be able to walk away understanding that the fear may be present, but your faith is even strong mm -hmm. because it's going to always be there. There is a, a, a scripture in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. I'm not trying to go churchy on y'all all the way. I'm trying to balance this thing, but what's in this in you? All right now. There is a scripture, and, and Daniel prays this prayer. And he's been praying, and, and I'm sure in his mind, I wasn't there with him, but if I had the conversation with him, he would probably be like, I prayed this thing, I'm praying to God, and I'm just praying. And it's just like nothing is happening. 
He praying. How many of you felt like you prayed before and you just got on praying, but you don't see the manifestation of it? Anybody been there before? So Daniel prayed this prayer, and he had been praying, but what happened eventually, God loved him so much because I'm sure God saw his level of frustration that was happening because he had been praying this prayer, and it appears as if nothing happened. God allowed the angel to manifest and come to him and have a conversation with him, telling him that the moment you prayed, God released your answer, but there were some obstacles in getting that answer to you. There were some things that manifested. So God had to send some help. And when he sent the help, the help allowed the, the, the manifestation of those prayers. So Daniel talks about that experience. He talks about when the angel appeared to him. And he said, the angel said to him, stand up. Because he wanted him to stand up and to receive. And he said, I did it with fear and trembling. He did it, and sometimes you just have to do it. Even though you feel that fear, even though you don't know the outcome of a thing, but when you obey God and you do the thing that he has called you to do, that's the, the, the triple down, the ripple down effect. That's when God begins to cause the dots in your life to get connected and stay connected, and you begin to see some powerful things take place in your life. God, I don't know the outcome of this. When I, when, when Don and I arrived here today, we didn't know what was going to be here. We don't know the outcome of this, but we know that because this is something that God called us to do, that we had to be obedient to that and just come. And that's the same thing. So in, in order, I'm so glad that Erica allowed me the opportunity to start this because in order, and see the thing that happens, we go to workshops and conferences and different things like this, and we get all the food. It's all on the table like this. And we see it there, but we don't know how to do it. We don't know what to make first. We don't know if we should eat this one first or go with that. We don't know which utensils to use. But when we lay the foundation like this, you're clear because you know that in order for you to excel in everything that God has called you to do, that there has to be a level of faith that exists on the inside of you because that's the foundation. 